Uh, this video is a follow-up to uh, producers. How do you find them? You know, uh, granted, uh, when we talk about the history of the breed and we talk about great producers, most of the attention is given to males. And uh, I'm not going to say that's wrong. Males have bred a lot more. Uh, in the past, in competitions, males were competed with more. Uh, there's a few reasons why, you know, uh, females have a heat cycle, females, well, pups, you know, that, that's the biggest uh, reason for it. Uh, there's that timeline of you breed them, they have the pups, they have to go through the process of whelping them, they have to go through the process of recoup after that, if you're going to compete with them. You may miss another heat cycle after that. Even if you didn't compete with them, you had to wait the six months if they're regular to come into heat again. Some are not regular. Some come in once a year, every nine months, things like that. So just by nature, uh, males were competed with more and uh, they're bred more. You can breed a male to a lot more females than you can any one female to several males. Uh, but that's not to say that the females aren't important. In most people's breeders' eyes and opinion, the females are more important than males. Just for the fact that they aren't bred as much. Their numbers, as far as offspring, are lower. So, when you have a female that's a good producer, she's worth more because of that. You can't get that many pups out of her like you can a male. But the ones you get, if they're good, they're worth more because there's not a lot of them. So, and that's true in horse racing. That's true in, in game fowl dogs whatever it is you know the the females just aren't bred that much less in horse racing because throughout their lifetime a mare might only be might only produce six to ten offspring you know they have i think their gestation period is nine months or something like that it's a long time it's not a couple of months like it is dogs and they only have one or two at the most offspring per breeding so they're revered more even more so in uh in horse racing the males are too even though like i said the focus is on the males now there's a way to fix traits and a female can be a catalyst for that a female can be a foundation for that there's been several females throughout the history of the breed that were foundations for, for whole families of dogs, you know, and, and it was because of that, that whole bloodlines and families of dogs came from that, even though, again, traditionally, bloodlines are not named after females. You, you have Bolio, you have Bully Son, you have Eli, you have May Day, you have buck and you have you know even in the past pilot and kager and pincher and uh you know i keep forgetting that ofrn dog uh, uh he was he was very important uh his owner was a was in the military he served during world war ii was ferguson ferguson centipede uh ferguson was a a decorated military man served one term in World War II, was called back to action, and he was killed during his second term. And his dog centipede was handled and conditioned by different people, including Tudor, and uh, won several matches. So those males have been foundations uh, for bloodlines, or had bloodlines named after them which typically a female is not. But with females, again, 
You can build a whole family of dogs around them. You can fix the traits. Now, some people will say, you know, you shouldn't concentrate on one dog. You should have a variety of dogs. I looked at it like this. If I have a producing male or female, whatever it is, and I think those traits are important enough to retain and keep, I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, focus on that individual. And the other animals in the pedigree, the other dogs in the pedigree, male and female, whether they're related to that individual or not, are used as, I don't want to say stepping stones. They're used as a way of continuing the traits of that particular individual that I'm concentrating on. That's the definition of line breeding. That's how you do it. So I'm going to give three examples here of females, what I consider, at least in modern times, the greatest producing females in modern times. Uh, the first one would be Black Widow. Uh, Black Widow was a relative of Daibo. She came from from uh, uh, breedings from Trahan and and uh, uh, you know uh, Hubbard's Gimp and all that bouncer and stuff like that. You know, related to Daibo, related to Cotton's Bullet. Cotton's Bullet and Daibo are cousins too. So uh, Black Widow would kind of be like a, a grand niece or grand cousin or something like that, a die boy. I, I haven't seen the pedigree in a long time, but I kind of have in my mind uh, where, where it comes from, how she was bred. The important thing with her is, I don't know if she was ever matched. I don't think she ever was, but it's been written that she was a quality female in that respect. But it's her breedings that matter. And again, the females I'm going to mention... In, in the whole concept of breeding, the whole output of offspring uh, the, and, and the males that they were bred to, it's just a handful of dogs. So from Black Widow, you have what's called the Zeke Black Widow blood or the Dibo Black Widow or the Spike Black Widow stuff. She was just off the top of my head. She was bred to Tudor's Daibo. She was bred to Tudor's uh, Spike. She was bred to uh, Kern's Lucky. And there's some other ones. But those are, those are the most famous ones, the most prominent ones. Well, what bloodlines came from that? Well, you have the heavy Daibo stuff, the Maloney blood. You have the Tonka stuff, where where you have a uh, uh, tombstone bred to Red Baby, and uh, with the Tonka stuff, it has some Bolio in there. That's what Zeke Black Widow is. It's basically that's what produced the Black Widow, the the Bolio blood. And you have Black Widow in that pedigree. You have her sister Judy in that pedigree. It, it, you could almost say it's almost like three quarters Black Widow stuff, with a little bit of cold be coming through the Heinzel stuff. But that blood went on to produce families of dogs, or families of dogs came from it in its almost purest form and in its cross form, in its line bred form, loose and tight. In the U.S., in Mexico, from that you have uh, Bolio, you have Carver's Mendocino, his sister, you have Morphine's Handicap, their brother, and all that stuff was was mixed here and there to keep that Zeke Black Widow stuff going. You have Handicap in Mexico. Also, you have Fontenot's Booger. Who was, uh, he comes from the Spike Black Widow breeding. Uh, by way of Toot. Toot is directly, uh, Maloney's Toot was directly off Spike Black Widow. A very hard biting dog. Short order cook. His wins, whether it was two or more. 
were under 30 minutes, most of them, if not all of them. I know two of them reported. I don't think either one of them went 20 minutes. So you have that Fontenot's booger going down to Mexico with morphine being crossed with the Carver stuff, Red Lady, and also with the Andicap stuff, females down from Andicap, the breedings they made, uh, uh, they made down there. So you have it in both places. And with the uh, uh, Carver stuff, the, the Black Widow uh, Spike stuff, you have Carver's Honey Boy, you have Carver's Cracker, you have uh, uh, that that stuff mixed with the Colby Lightner stuff, the Ed Crenshaw stuff. Uh, just a lot of stuff comes from that from that those breedings. Even the Paladin stuff, Champion Paladin, has the Spike Black Widow stuff in it, you know, or the Dibo stuff in it, cross with the with the. Uh, with the uh, Ed Crenshaw blood, you know, Reno and Major and all that. Uh, other, other uh, Dibo uh, Black Widow stuff with the Ed Crenshaw stuff came out to the West Coast, California. That's where uh, Champion Catfish comes from. That's where Grand Champion Hope comes from. Uh, Catfish was uh, half brother and half sister Tudor's Buck, which was a brother to Spike, bred to the Ed Crenshaw stuff. So you have a lot of that Dibo Black Widow, Spike Black Widow, Zeke Black Widow, all over the place. And some of it may not have the Black Widow in it up close or heavy or anything like that. And some of it might not have it at all, but what what happened was they would take that Dibo stuff later on and breed it to something with Black Widow in it. And then you have the full circle where it comes around and they're making the same breedings again over and over. Grand Champion Hank comes from that stuff. Grand Champion Hank was uh, comes from the, you know, has heavy Dibo, Dibo blood in it. And there again, you have Hank being bred to Red Baby. She's Klaus with Bo Leo. So there you have the influence of the Black Widow stuff again. Right. And that was done repeatedly here and there and everywhere. And those dogs went out. A lot of them worldwide. Especially the Bo Leo stuff. You know. But the 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 Dibo Black Widow or the, the, the Tombstone Red Baby stuff. You know, that, that, it covered all over the South, you know, all over the, the, the Southwest and the Deep South, even some of it going up North, some of it coming out West, you know, uh, I mentioned before the, uh, Corvino, Bolio, Eli stuff that was out West, that eventually was, was bred to more Bolio stuff, it was bred to more Eli's stuff, where there you have more influence of Dibo in it. And uh, you have the, the Otter's Tonka Bear stuff, you know, uh, Maloney's Davis, uh, Jimmy Boots, all heavy Dibo influences. And at some point, maybe not all of them, at some point, you're going to see some Dibo Black Widow in there. You're going to see some Zeke Black Widow in there. So that's what made her so important. Not the number of breeding she had, but the quality of offspring that she threw that was later used in different ways, tight, loose, and totally crossed, where the influence of those dogs were felt for generations after generations. So the next female I'm going to get into, probably the most famous one in modern times, would be Champion Honey Bunch. R.O.M. She's noted for producing uh, champions in almost every litter. Again, she was only bred to a handful of males. Uh, Irish Jerry's Trim Moody, Crenshaw's Rascal, Finley's Bow, Woods Oso Negro, Grand Champion Zebo. Uh, those are the ones that come to the top of my head. Producing champions in most of them, 
winners in probably all of them, but producers that came from all of them. Uh, from my understanding, Honey Bunch was one of those types where she only came in heat once a year. And if that's true, uh, I can relate because my sissy female was like that. Sissy female was like that. She only came in once a year, about every nine months. But it turned out once a year. So she wasn't bred that much, but she threw quality too. And there's different uh, families of dogs that have come off of that, you know. Generally, we talk about, you know, Jeep. Jeep dogs. Or we talk about rascal dogs. Uh, when when you're talking about stuff bred down from, from Honey Bunch. Rascal Jr. from the Rascal Honey Bunch breeding Jeep. From the Finley's Bow Honey Bunch breeding. You know, uh, you have Grand Champion Snake from Otis Honey Bunch. That's another male she was bred to, Champion Otis. And... Uh, very little from the trim moody stuff there was some of it you know uh grand champion uh what's his name uh we hunt grand champion we hunt from came from that breeding champion bully boy came from that breeding also negro breeding basically a lot uh, more females than males most of them uh through dogs like for Kimsey Wood and, and Ronnie Hyde and, and different people in the South. And back at that time, as the breedings continued forward, some of those crosses were made. Meaning, uh, you know, that's where you have Jeep Rascal from. The best Jeep Rascal stuff for me is Jeep bred to females off of Rascal Junior and Honey, I mean uh, Rascal and Honey Bunch, the Rascal Junior females basically. His even even uh, uh, Rascal Junior's sister was bred to Finley's bow. That's what produced Grand Champion Outlaw, seven-time winner. But you see a lot of the Rascal uh, Jeep Rascal blood. Even I I uh, incorporated that into my breedings. You know, uh, later on. And even though I call them Jeep dogs and Jeep blood because that was the foundation, they're more in the line. When I added more Rascal Jr., because originally that uh, female I had, Sissy, on her bottom side, she had the Rascal Jr. in her. So she had that in her. So when I put the Rascal stuff in her, which was down from Rascal Jr., it just reintroduced that blood again. So those are Finley's Bow Honey Bunch. Rascal Honey Bunch, and it just kept repeating itself. What some people did was when you when you incorporate, they incorporated, they had that stuff, and then they incorporated the Otis Honey Bunch stuff, like uh, uh, Rocka's uh, Stonewall, like that. He he he. He has kind of both, and then later on that stuff was bred to Rascal Jr. stuff and like that. But th those are the three main ones. Otis to Honey Bunch, Rascal to Honey Bunch, Bo to Honey Bunch that were basically used. So when you put those together, that's how you fix the traits of Honey Bunch. You're having offspring from Honey Bunch, different males that were bred to her. Those offspring down the line were bred amongst each other. So you have Kobe, Daibo, you have uh, uh, Leitner, you have Eli, you have all this stuff, you know, uh, put together. But the main factor, the single factor that's involved in all of them is Honey Bunch. And because she was, she was such a prolific producer, you could mix it any which way you want and you're probably going to get something from it. And those breedings, at least for me, were concentrated on the honey bunch side. Those were the traits I looked for. That's where the finish in the Jeep dogs comes from. And strength and speed and intensity. Jeep was known for that. Honey bunch was known for that too. So he got that part from his mother. And if you have 
Jeep dogs that have finished, that's where they're coming from, honey bunch. So her traits were fixed by not me, not just me and, and a bunch of people. Whether they intentionally meant to do that or they did it as a matter of course in seeing quality animals, what they considered quality animals that happened to be related, it was done. It fixed the traits. And, and anybody uh, in later years that had that stuff mixed up, whether it was two ways or three ways or however you, you want to look at it, that's, that's at least that's what they should have been doing. That's what I tried to do was fix those intense traits, that strength, the speed, gameness, and... Uh, you, you, you got a lot of consistency when you did that, when you followed the individuals that retained those traits, that exhibited those traits. So that's why I think she's so important. Again, from just a few breedings, several different families of dogs, all kinds of different ways of breeding uh, her blood that continued for generations. Uh, the third one, this is my, my personal choice. A lot of it is sentimentality. A lot of it, because Ronald Boyles is my friend, but that would be Dirty Mary. But it can't just be because he's my friend and I liked her and I like that blood or whatever. You have to have production behind it. So again, from a handful of males in the overall scheme of things, uh, Four Bits, Bobby Jr., uh, Cherokee Chief, Champion Bumper, uh, Euler, maybe one or two more, I, I'm not sure, but that just off the top of my head, it's just from those breedings. Uh, and again, what, what I believe Boyles did with that is he made her the foundation. Even when you see like Bobby Jr. bred to Reddy, which produced Grand Champion Queen of Hearts. Or you see her daughter, uh, Sweet Pea, bred to Four Bits, uh, 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 Dirty Mary bred to Four Bits that produced Sweet Pea. So that's the daughter of Dirty Mary. You see her in pedigrees too. So through her offspring... As Boyles continued making his breedings, what he did is, is something that I've that I've preached about, you know, over and over. You you make all these breedings, whether they're crosses or line bred or even inbred stuff, right? And as you continue forward, even though you have outcrosses there, it could be two or three outcrosses. Some of the males Boyles bred to, they're Eli bred, you know, even Dutch boy junior stuff they're kind of eli bred different families of eli or different you know bumpers off of art to outcross female they have that commonality of eli or bully son or eli junior whatever you want to call it but it's different stuff but as you continue forward you take all those offspring put them together they're all going to be related in some way some some close some loose some totally outcross but when you put them together here they are being related even later on when you got the handicap stuff i'm sure people took that which is heavy more heavier on the bolio side took that bred it to something with dirty mary in it so you have all these offspring he did a lot of, of, of half brother half sister and down the line cousins and aunts and uncles and all that stuff together but he was kind of a stickler for a half-brother, half-sister. That's basically what he did with the Dirty Mary stuff. And then when you take, let's say, the, the Bobby Jr. To, uh, to the Boomerang stuff, to Reddy, the Queen of Hearts stuff. Take that. They went back to Mr. Rogers or something like that. That's the Cherokee Chief and Dirty Mary. So even if they go out somewhere with it, like Bumper, like uh, Cummings... Red Boy, or uh, Dutch Boy Jr. The Euler stuff, which is heavy Eli. At some point, they're going to come back to the Dirty Mary stuff. So the Dirty Mary, for me, the Boyle stuff, that's the foundation. Most are going to concentrate 
on the bloodline saying it's it's Bo Leo or it's Eli or it's Grand Champion Hank stuff, you know, with some Klaus, with the Red Baby, whatever it is. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna focus on the males. I didn't do that when I was looking at the breedings. When I was looking at dogs that I got from Boils, I wanted to make sure they had Dirty Mary on them. That's the foundation. She's the catalyst. She's the 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 foundation for that stuff. What people did with it after they got it from Boils and it got more away from him, they did what they did. There was a lot of successes that way too. And again, you're going to have negatives no matter what. There, there's people going to have negatives about this blood and that blood and this and that. But when you go straight to the breeder, like Carver, with the uh, with the uh, Zeke Black Widow stuff, or if you could at the time, go to Tudor for the Spike Black Widow and Dibo Black Widow stuff. Or you go to Crenshaw or Garrett when you want the Honey Bunch stuff. Or you go to Boyles when you're looking for the Dirty Mary stuff. That's where you'll find your best success with the breeder. Someone who has created a family of dogs based on certain individuals. And produced a type of dog or a family of dogs that retain certain traits, exhibit certain traits, and are able to pass those traits on. So when I look at least those three... I, I I I know the history of the males. I know why they bred to them or why they why I think they bred to them. And I know the production of those males and I know the record competition of those males. But for me, I'm looking where are they putting these females in their pedigree? Is it half brother? Is it an influence where it may be uh the sire of one litter may be the grandsire of that same litter or even great grandsire where is it is it uncle niece is it aunt nephew is it cousins when they're when they're inbred which individual are they inbred on now granted there's probably been more successes with inbred males meaning father daughter breedings and it could be just because those were done more. Right? But but still I'm gonna look. Are they are they concentrating on the female in particular that I'm interested in? If they are, that's where I would go with it. That's why I bred to other rascal stuff that didn't really work out for me. So that's why I stuck with the Rascal Junior stuff. Rascal to Honey Bunch, because those seem to be the better dogs, better all-around dogs, better producers. And they had traits that I liked more than other rascal stuff I had or seen. So through the process of elimination, it just showed me when I kept to the honey bunch stuff, that that's where the, the key was. That was the foundation of it. In the Zeke stuff, Black Widow stuff or... Dival Black Widow, Spike Black Widow. That's where I look. Where is Black Widow? Even her sister Judy. Where are they in the pedigree? Are they being concentrated on? Because all the ones that I mentioned, basically they are. And even if they have less Black Widow in it than some other families of dogs, what are they breeding it to? Dival stuff? Spike stuff? Kern's lucky stuff. Same same types of breedings. And the same with Dirty Mary. Where is she at? If you have a bunch of half brother, half sisters, all down like that, from all those males, Dutch Boy Jr. and Grand Champion Cherokee Chief and and uh Champion Bumper and Euler and you know, like that. What's the commonality? It's not those males, even though they may be here and there, Bobby Jr. all over the place like that. Uh, the common denominator, the foundation, is Dirty Mary in all those breedings. So this video is just to give some credit to the females. Uh, maybe someone who's not, their, their mindset wasn't concentrating on the females so much, but 
what the males are producing uh, maybe give you a little insight and and uh, food for thought on concentrating on the females because like I've mentioned before the females carry the pups that quality of that female is more important in that respect they need to be durable they need to have constitution they need to be tough and rugged if nothing else healthy also because they're the ones that are going to carry the pups they're the ones who are going to be bred and have to go through that process over and over and over again some not so much you know i didn't breed my females a lot of times but some people do and did breed them a lot five six breedings you know that's that's several sometimes more you know and uh uh all that takes a toll on them. So their health in that respect is very important. Their constitution, durability, all that is very important. Because what they are at the time is going to influence what the pups are. If they're weak and sickly, you're going to have weak, sickly pups. If they're strong and durable, you have a better chance of having strong, durable pups. It's that simple. So there's a lot of reasons why the female, in my opinion, is more important than a male. Even though it's easier to concentrate on a male... When you're making your breedings, uh, these are some of the reasons why it's uh, female is more important to me. Foundation, uh, that always comes to mind when I speak of females. So let me know what you think.